Здравейте на всички, аз съм NoTanks. Добре дошли в третия епизод на Killer Frequency. Продължава нашето приключение. Дали ще загинат още жители на градчето? Много вероятно. За съжаление не ни се получават много добре нещата. Но игричката изглежда много добре. Аз така от известно време не съм я цъкал. Сега се завършваме обратно в нея. Надявам се, че нещата от преди, които са се случили, няма да ни попречат. Т.е. няма да съм забравил нещо което да е изключително важно, но да, настанете се удобно. Желаю ви приятно гледане, продължаваме с Killer Frequency. Някой ни звъня трета ли? Какво беше това всъщност? Така. А, това беше нещо, което си намерихме. Хей, ти знаеш нещо, което ще ни помогне? Да, 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 ти знаеш нещо, което Carries on line one. Whenever you're ready. Така точно така. Ние търсихме някаква информация за да може да помогнем на Кери за някакви неща. Добре. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Кери, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay. First things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Check this out. Who should climb the roof? Ah, to go straight to the top is not clear. It's not clear that the one who can climb the roof is Heather. In this case, it's Tazi. Maybe. Но нека да прочетем и другите. Само, че мен друго ме предснява. Как да го увелича това? Добре. Има ли друга страна? Има и друга страна. Окей, добре. Какво е това? Така. Значи, най-вероятно да се качи на Еверест има хедър. Най-вероятно да спечели награда за най-лошия покър фейс. Синтия, Скот и така нататък. Нямаме време, нали? Нямаме време. Окей, чакни. Най-вероятно е да завърши в затвора. Сет, Дженитва. Най-вероятно да избяга от затвора. Най-вероятно да стане олимпийски атлет. Най-вероятно да мине теста за книжка без грешки. Най-вероятно да спечели Оскар. Най-вероятно да победи всички на картинг. А е много вероятно да <към> да припадне, докато тича в хорор муви. Добре, let's go. Така, значи. Затова отговаряме Хедър. Малко време ни отне. Надявам се, че не си на прима. Така. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Значи Jennifer е most likely to escape prison. Това е четвъртото, нали? А какво друго имаме? Driving license, да спечели Оскар. Jennifer. Има ли? Има е. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Така? Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then it's part four. Така... Ммм... This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David. Cynthia. And Scott. Тук имаме кой е вероятно да е олимпик атлет. Имаме. К 
Вот Дэвид Хедер. Там и са lost, most likely to win an Oscar. Че да видим Лиза и там и къде ги има някъде друга да обаче. Може да разбираме повече за тях. Лиза много малко вероятно е да се окаже в затвора. Добре. Синтия има ли някъде? Има я... Worst Poker Face. А! Няма да слагаме Лиза. Тами. Тами избираме, защото другата... Не знам. Доста интересно е направим. Кой печелише? Скот ми трябва. Скот ми трябва. Скот. I know we all love watching Americans scared. Yes, I... Yeah. Just do what they did in the movie. Uh... Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves. And then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope so. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. I don't think I'm so sure. Ну вау! А... Какво продължаваме с музичката? Oh, Съвиждаме вече, че Скотт може да се окаже и в Кар Краш. Good luck and Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got cut. Oh God. Focus. Focus. Breathe. Breathe. Right. The van keys. We got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. And Hot David should be back any second. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step. I'm going to Scott's place now. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else. Hide. This is a fun one. That Peggy, my sister, from the start, was super sensitive. But the first time we were together. 
chilling. Now, act like your life depends on it. Ah. Oh. There he is. Ah. He's buying it. Ah. Oh no. He knows. Ah. He, oh. Damn it. Now, push the bookshelf over. Stop. Искаме път си сега. Скот да не прецака нещата. Давай Скот, моля ти си. Аре, какво става? Какво става? Какво става? What was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Are true, are true, brat true. Тори мога да запали. Или за Той е блъсна. Сигурно. Катастрофа някаква направи. Oh my god. Please, no! No! Please, no! Please, no! Please, no! Никаква катастрофа ли стана, бе, бата? Тоа скот... Какъв тоа звук? Кери? А, живе? Кери? Oh, you're alive. Okay. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? Yeah. Yeah. I can oh, get home. Super. Biagi. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I. It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. You shouldn't have pranked me. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. But the cook got you so good, Prime. Some solution, but he's a pronouncement. The process of pretending no good kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Um. Yeah, then. Stop in the twilight. Fashion. No, 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 no. Dead air is a crime, Forrest. че няма да пускаме някакви убийствени такова ритми. Така. Hey, we had a call come in. Слушам. Forest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's hey. cool what you're doing, man. No uh, problem, bro. doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, Roller and I now consider you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. 
Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. Mm. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. Oof. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems and sharing that burden just took so much weight off. No, it was a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first God, step. Okay. Make that right, Max. Ah! Bobo. Oh, hello, Max. Yeah, welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. Maxi loves the ring, man. Is that another train, Maxi? Maxi loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. <laughs> it sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxi appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? You... Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. Cool. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. <laughs> you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. A what? A what? Защо нещо аз ли се отплеснах? Не разбрах какво искам да и пусна. Искам. Добре, пусаме това. Come on, Forrest, put some music on already. Пускам. You're gonna love this next track. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Oh. I made it home safe. Yeah. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. Eh. Yeah, I'm you know, even though not everybody made it, and uh, I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't? Just why choose am I? Why? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did, why let me go? Mm. Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe, but why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did. To these stupid hazing nights have to stop. Hmm. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, My Forrest? Book. 
Uh, could I request a song? Of course, you Harry. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. Hi right, then. Blast Processor. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About Fool? what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. <clears throat> I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Добре да се разходим да разгледаме някакви неща. Добре, тук гордо разгледахме работата. Аз не мога да разбера как ги изстрелваме тия. Аз. Как ти? Така. Okay. Locked tight. Smugazi. Turn to the Чакайте, че за ръто тук са бори нещо. Ей, сега да бъде. Правихме всичко. Let's go. Добре. А... Трябва ли нещо също с нас? Просто се разхожда, не? Тя просто ни каза, ако искаме да... да се разходим, да се разходим. Е, аут е фордър. Моли това го ста. Форми така. Найс! Нова музика да играе. Това е късета ли беше? Яко. It's fire broken. But I can't do much in a talk for you. Let me come in and see. Need the key. Not getting in there tonight. The home pre Peggy. The door is not there. The home. To catch the thing on top. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or scratch that for us. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16, the scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, What's that up? call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks mm -hmm. for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for us. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. We have and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. 
long ride home? A long you know, ride home. The one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Eh, kak tuga. But we don't have that song. As Что? you just said, Peggy Что? threw it out the window. Forest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don. But we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Oh. Uh... Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don. Uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest? Peggy, I'm... I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. For what? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. And you'll find out. Uh, uh... Well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Here comes one of my favorites. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious is about... For... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't she's really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh... You know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Scream. With me, Peggy. Okay. Let's <laughs> Shooting. Force suit for five fire for that. An pack a shakan nasa version. Brat Omega. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here. Uh, in the open. Това не е ли мястото, откъде започна? Боле да тичам. Къде тук да ми е? О! Не знам какво е, това ме го взем. Още такива ли ми трябват? Някакви бушони. За какво са ми тия бушони? Уу, има много бушони. Ой, тук има още. Елевейтър. Вау! Това е сброкен. Възможно, че ще бъде сегурно, от лист. Тоест, това някъде има някакъв бушон, а? Кот беше това, бе? О! Лонг райд хоум, тя нали то ще искаш? Лонг райд хоум! А къде? Влизай тук вътре, бе. На! Преди съм се настрал. Още бушони. Какво ще правя с тия бушони, бе, брат? Добър вечер, ми так. Възможно. 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 Възможно.
And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Great. Guess I'm going to have to fix that elevator. Looks like I'm going to have to hunt around for some new fuses. Трябва Сами начин да разбием. Въпреки, че ние така ли че друг бушой няма. Така че стискаме палците да не се... <laughs> да не се развалят. For oh wow. I could probably survive that fall. Uh Nelly Nemno okay to stand it car. Nelly, Nesha the Pukajan, Utenaka. For such looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? What's that? What's that? What's that? Give me a nifty picture. There's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. What the hell? Nifty Peggy is not going to believe this. Фистира от им. Гейм дей някакви неща. Чук броуди. А това какво е? Моля е последващото. Нещо. Да измиеме. Ти мой. Фу, трябва да направим така. Имаме някакви имена. Добре, че ли да са? Взехме стълби. Може би тук има. Тук е някакво заключено. 
Аз не трябва да се качвам с пълни. Хм, I wonder how the show is going. Oh, ето къде сме? Добре, тази също ме пита ли нещо? Може би за тези неща, които намерихме в това. Че? Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive, the janitor, might be Clive, the murderer. What? Let's start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. Ah, to kedy mi toi ubesnia ketchup fatian? Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the here? creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target? That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh, wow. How's it going? Uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. Da. There's da. four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Da. Great. Need any more help? I'm good now. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. I think I should go down. Okay, so let's start with this. Let's divide each one of them. So, the marriage announcement. We would like to celebrate the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein on 30 May. На кой? На Питър Стайн? Той е тук няма нито една тя, не? А, Ким Уолкър. Аз съм пял. Така, Крайм Синдикейт. Ере, да им фърваме хвана. Ребека Алън е това. The two-year investigation into the festival of the world of investigators blamed two engineers that were oh. Aunt Williams and Sean Everett. за кой е да го водим? Ми така казвам добре чай, че мъчиме тука някакъв тега филм. В 
Fist. Да пробваме Lucky Guess. How's it going? Mm, I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? Gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistle Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who <laughs> is this? This is Boris Nash. Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it, and oh God, it, it's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I. Four. Run. Quit talking and run. I I think he ran off. Did he? Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. <laughs> Jeez. It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Jiver. Boris! The whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah, damn it, that fireball threw me. I got to get to the hospital. Dear man. I'm not feeling great. But the worst thing was possible. Forest, man. I can't thank you enough. Do you need see? Yeah, I gotta go. Wait, I. Damn it, we lost him. No. Okay. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. Брат. Това беше тегаво, но малко го научи какво е. Какво става са? There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. <laughs> Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. <laughs> me too. Okay, let's go. Това е тази ма главно. Брат, много интересно е направи. Много интересно е направи на тази игра. Ти го имаме на зето. Is this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Kade? Kade vidya kluch brat? Za kaf kluch govori tva oče? Mm -hmm. 
да не би там още отворено врата. Да не би сега па да не даде тук да отворим. Тоест да не би сега да ни даде да разрешуваме ключ, който взехме по-рано. Аз имам ли инвентар нещо? Не. И какво правим? Ключно съм виждал. Ей, Форест! Чакай, това е то, който... А той е се опитвал и той да разследва? Не. Да, но... Добре, а сега. Вижте го това. Това е между две такива, е, сякаш. Сякаш има нещо. Зади сякаш тук, но сякаш не е тук. О, о, ето за това става въпрос, Тук има ли някакво такова шкафче? Кардор. Кардор. 
бата по да ми скара къл. Какво някой? Фория Меджо Дуди с Вирджиния. Is not gonna believe this. Wow. Добре, да хвам да го кажем. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Mm. Do you think you've met her before? I don't As know. I, mean, I, mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. Mm. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says... I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Mm -hmm. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? <sighs> if only she had made it. Then we might have learned more about what's going on. It's okay. We did what we could. Mm -hmm. The takeout idea was a long shot as it was. Oh, fuck. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? 
I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The coroner came to the conclusion that George was running from something, likely terrified. Maybe an yeah, animal? Presumably. Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? Mm. I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You, you knew when the medic... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? Maybe. We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything for us? I think there's got to be more down here. Monsters. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. The brim. It's coming through. Uh, it's a little fun. It's a little fun. It's a Isto. Ah, que bom. Здравейте, известно време ми се да си купя ново видеокарта. Ще само да спра това, че аз правя някакви записи. Само да подписна записи. Стейдж сме изпуснали нещо. Много проблеми, братва. Винаги, ако мога да помогна с нещо.
a similar shape that you can make in there. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face, mm -hmm. typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running this without looks useful. stop. Four a.m. call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contracted the coroner's office. So. Dobrem. Okay, let me over that. What have you found, Forrest? Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Spreading through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? The toxicology tape made it sound like he was highly stressed, maybe terrified of something. I, I think he was chased. I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Jasmine? Jasmine? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests? Absolutely. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. In the strength of... I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Mm -hmm. uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Oh, directly. Добре. Wow. Three hours. Buttons in a way, like a criminal. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? I told you. This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. We gotta do what we <sighs> gotta right. do, you know? So, what's the plan now? <sighs> well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. So bad. Do you want to call her? Oh, yes. I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll okay. be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Трябва да бъдем меки, значи. Що ми първи първи? И не трябва да пушваме. Аха, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Jazz Pizzazz. Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. 
how jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you ask. Mm. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Oh, you got my number. Ooh. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. That's so pleasant. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell. He was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Nah, 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 nah. He'd have chased after anybody. Nah. Right. Well... We think he might be chasing specific people. Specific people indeed. who know about the death of a boy named Mel George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Uh... Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about... Uh, yes, of course. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. Sure, I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh... I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, mm -hmm. if anyone out there has any thoughts, on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Yeah. Welcome to 189.16 The Stream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. <laughs> You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid... Salt and pepper him, hair. Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start a just- You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! To Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. Not We've sure. already got another caller on the line. Go and get her. Oh, well. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. What? <laughs> caller. <laughs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry. Sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... 
All I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> That's moving all along. Say about that. I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16 The Scream. With me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Ah, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me oh, now. Shit. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. The gun? Right. Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between Town Hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Trailer Park. Kelly Cousin. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he could muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. He's coming down the street. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security uh, 4000. Fa a keypad. And it looks like it wants a, a six digit fuck number. Fuck me, you want me, you want me, you want me, you want me. Uh. We'll see what we can do. I'll give you a chance. Of course. Of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll see you at a site. I have a kind of document. Alright folks, here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Moment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Da, well, well, I'm not sure to this listen. But to help someone. Da, I am Mushi. Yeah, nine o'clock. Okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. <laughs> Starling 4000 user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Chopata Savaza, Chirinaisa Mesta, Chopa Jiffy Zdrav the Sivertle, Joa Motion Zdrav A Sichkunai Nai. Oh, fat, oh. But fashion is fresh out, but to him just smooth of keep talking and nobody explodes. 
Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Which code should I give? The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. inside and turn on the radio whoever that was she was trying to break into the ring she forest man you got no idea that was him that was the whistling man the alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle i don't like hurting folk but i can't let anything happen to maxi he's my best friend you know i listen man i'm heading back inside Whoa. gonna barricade that window my man thank you you and peggy can skate for free whenever you want forever that's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we <laughs> process what just happened. Good evening. Well, I'm just trying to get a porch. I'm going to go to Let's see. So the whistling man is a woman. Is a woman? I have As my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. No. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Wow. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Really? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you.
We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hopefully. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Oh, boy. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's, oh, for... he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Um. Easy, easy. Take a breath. Relax. Reservoir, que he devo... screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Mm. Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. The that means stopping <laughs> the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Do you think you can handle that? <coughs> yeah, no, 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 yes. Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Yeah. If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding that. right now. If anything, you should secure it so okay. it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Um... Uh, keep going? I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he okay. does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. 
get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. Okay. All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's She's so much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hmm. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Took some, took some. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Mm. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top That's of the no dryer. Some gloves on the hood of the car. No, I guess I've got my jacket. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some gloves on the hood of the car. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Dark okay. Forest, okay. Oh, wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. Direct for the Napra. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Dobre. Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Okay. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these the futuristic kid. things that have information on them. Futuristic. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, 
Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Okay. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. The car. Regis office. Quiet the seclusion office. I want to believe. Oh, safe and Looks rich. like I need a four digit code. Very important date. But nice to do it. The city. Sydney. Това са двете най-важни дати. Други няма значение. Добре. Сега си е сега. Някакви бележчици. Помогайте за флопи диск. Could this be it? This be it. You know, it's a little seven. So I didn't see the soul. Quite nice. Oh my god. The route is so. The skate. John Hedges. What the fuck? What the fuck? The guy. Hey, Virtue, do you want to go to the hospital? I know he was a wonderful. Добре, ето го, то Джон. Джон не ни ли върши работа? Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. You're right, I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. 
I can read the rest of this later. Was that chosen man? Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. Джонс сега е лежит. Брадли Картер. Така. И май първия. Ще бъде. Това е нашия човек. Окей. Ще сме оли по интерком. Има ли интерком тук? Има да. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I? Hello? Is anybody there? No, Please so. pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Peggy? I'm drawing a bit of a blank here. Forrest, I think he's going into shock. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. the bandage <laughs> apply another one on top of it do you still this have something you can use I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm so I'll use my jacket I can always get a new one I'll just have to put it on my jacket and then I'll be ready to go hold on please don't let put it Go for it, Drew Everett Lancer. Okay. Oh, I'm scared. She was drawn. 
Благодаря много за подкрепата. Много добре, така е много, много напрегнато. Джейсън е добре. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay, okay? Okay. Please. I can't give him what he needs. Please, help. I can't lose him. Alright, Lawrence, you need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? Hmm. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training. But he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. Never was a oh, war medic, huh? Yeah, and Shouldn't according to Reggie's notes, John Shpumum. keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? At? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then I can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man or Never mind. He he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Hmm. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say stabbed do you know the extent of his injuries from what we were told he has two major stab wounds one to the stomach and one to the leg this is the knife is yesterday. still in his leg and the stomach wound is open understood let me grab a few supplies and i'll head right over damned if he dies on my watch thank you john we'll let him know you're on your way good luck hello casey are you there how are we doing What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Yes, Casey, yes. help is on the way. My <laughs> colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. This is John Hedges. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. Nope. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm going to need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. Top. God, I hope he's going to be all right. But it's good over this And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Mm -hmm. uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Need them. No. Ooh. Lack of a douche. You'll like this next song. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night. So try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's go. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? 
Morris, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Hmm. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Ah, oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Oh, Actually, I, right. I think I have some info that might help you. Huh? Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a cool. gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Like a, like a Ricky, they call All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were... just having a good time, and then... the next thing I knew... everyone was running for their life. I looked up... and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. <laughs> I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And... I can't believe they did that to you all. Yeah, but they did. And it took a long time to get over that, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Ah! Night, Ricky. <phone rings> all right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, hmm. she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Stop big button. Oh, we have another call thing. coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Trust her. Peggy. You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Dobre. Продолжаваме. We have a call waiting. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. <laughs> it's so good to hear from no, you. Are you okay? Oh, fuck. We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. 
Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. Не казват, че няма батерия. Обаче нещо ми се правят. I made it to Henderson. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines though. Не Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Hmm. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Hmm, do what I'm. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully okay. the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. I don't know. We'll see you soon, Leslie. I don't know. Thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Best we don't waste any time then. Let's get back on air. You got it. Time to turn the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to the stream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up. But before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. Oh, well. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Yeah. Got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. Yeah. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only. It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to Feels take good, the edge huh? off. So... I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. Cause you? I'm 
guessing the whistling man is still out there. Le, the whistling woman. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. God. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. Tristor, tristor. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about yeah, it yeah. said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like he'd never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to that's... plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. Hmm. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead, but when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? Oh, God. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't uh oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Let's test the shift mazid. Let's see if we can get a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack. Broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare. Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Okay. Oh, see you when you're back. Let's go. So I'm going to do something that I'm going to do. I'm going to stick it down. I'm going to stick it down. Okay. Shit, I to to 
Huh? That's not opening. Что свет из червяна? Тук работа са, не мога ли да спре? Чай. Но як че мога излезе? Но реално ще не трябва. Къде Къде беше това другото помещение? Аз мутли съм, какво ми стана? Или много късно стана? Тук е стаята на това. Къде има да ме помощи? Как стигнахме до ние? Там. А, е така. Фар бак корнер. Why is this station so big? But that's the shame of you. Chase him. It's not good. Okay. That must be it. Boom! We've got power. Yeah. The whistling man. Oh shit. I need to warn Peggy. The Kremlin intercom. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Yeah. What the hell? What was that? What was that? What was that? Може и видях нещо, което... Той ще не трябваше да видя нещо, което не видях аз. Ши, тук не сме визили. О, не. Пеги! Къде ти го? Бум! Ба та... Не бе... Това не може да се случва. Ще пиеме ли по-ново кафе? Госпожо убиец. Oh well. A, a call. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Oh well. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. All right. We try to buy him a top. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> huh? 
Thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if you crawled out of his coffin yeah. with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. Oh, and if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, that, that he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course! That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hmm. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Hmm. <sighs> there we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. If you say so. If you say so. I'm not really in a position to argue. I'm happy we have your cooperation. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. Mm -hmm. And if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Come on, come on. Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Indeed. Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, 
Jason and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. <laughs> he had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. Okay. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We okay. looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... But the well, bone wounds. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on. I... Oh, God damn it. You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, hmm. shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. George took off running, but the girl? somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Tell me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. No, check me, it's cousin. Small. Fortune is down a little Who was under the mask, Murray? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Said it. What happened <laughs> next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off whistling point how do you know what happened i saw it you pushed him you were up there you were dressed as the whistling man too and i didn't push him god damn it i just chased him up there and he kept backing up when i saw he was about to go over i reached out that's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Damn it. Oh, you bitch. 
no one's going to believe this. After all, you did. I believe her. You... What? Why else cover it up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. <laughs> People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke, gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should have left toward my future? George was a blip? No, Gufti. That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I take it that's a yes? Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business. Unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Wow. Said George was drinking. You know, trying to work on a film scenario. And fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. Doesn't matter. You'd be disgusted by it. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe. There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no, that coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. When will the killing end, Marie? End? When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. It has to. You're at the roller rink. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High! I told you not to do that. Wait! He's dead too now, isn't he? He is. Oh, shit. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the Oops. Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy! Peggy. It's been so long since oh. I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. What? Will someone please explain to me what's happening? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. 
and that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out that my sister is oh. the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Hmm. I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night, too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. Mm -hmm. And since only their child was left... Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. <laughs> Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Oh. Uh... Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept the card from you. She, she kept it yeah. here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. But. Well, I. Leslie, how's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Hmm. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. Whoa. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. Good night, and good morning. Oh, wow. Доста загубихме. Ай, тук виждаме как това ще е толкова силно. Че е малко е бат, че. Моля ви се. Виж, тук виждаме... Замо това е мега яко местенце. Как кой как си ги представят? Кали си ги представят? 
It's a killer frequency. It's a killer frequency. But Tigra, Tigra. Skip a pillow can create. Така и не разбрахме за цяла игра как се фърлят някакви неща. Не съм много впечатлен. Как всичко бяха просто разговори и също време беше не изцепен. It's a killer frequency. One. IT manager. The skip for me. But it's very too far, though. Because the list is too long. Но нестандартно и, и доста интересно. Важно е, че я хванахме, предполагам. Предполагам, че я хванем. Ако не я хванем, ще е много тъжно. What? Какво стана, ще смени песента? Бате Избяга Така ли да разбирам Сериозно ли е това са Аре, аре, дайте да разберем Ако излезна от тук, ще го скипна това. А трябва да разберем. Ти от ли си? Това е хвилята Доун, която е сестрата на Пеги или не? Спряха да си говорят. Тоест няма. Няма намериха. Избяга Мейтвит. Джиджи. Е, брат, къде? Не, то сигурно има много различни варианти, но да, какво ня. И успя да избяга преди да. Може би трябваше да. да познаеме мястото. И то да оцелее, и той нещо да е заговори още и да се забави. Не знам, не знам, не знам. Но определено много интересна идея. Много ми хареса как беше направена цялата игричка, много ми харесва арта, много ми хареса как а, само с приказки беше супер напрегната. А, правя някой път такива впечатления видео, но мисля да направя допълнително видео към това и без това това стана супер дълго видео, който е фен на играта, ще го изгледа цялото. А, но да, много ми хареса концепцията, много ми хареса музиката в играта, много ми хареса арта. И много ми хареса това, че а, буквално с разгадаването на някакви малки информации малко ми натежаха някои моменти. А, но да, с разгадаването на информация прогресираме, успяваме да разгадаваме някакви пъзълчета, някакви въпросчета. Ако не следиме нещо внимателно, пропускаме. Някой умира и продължаваме напред. Това беше Killer Frequency, готини хора. Много интересна игричка. Много нестандартна и много приятна. Надявам се, че сте си изкефили, ако е така. Цъкнете по едно лайкче. Няма да ви казвам за дизлайка, но 
знаете, може да направите. Чао, чао от мен ще се видим скоро в поредната лудница с Полктобър. Ще има много интересни неща. Пръскаме се напред и нагоре.